I'm trying not to hurt you, baby. But you are. Parenting is hard, real hard. And while being the child of celebrities comes with all kinds of perks, like private jets, hobnobbing with elites, designer brands, you name it, it also comes with its own set of strict rules. Right now, we're gonna go through just a few of those rules that celeb kids have to follow. There are certain things you're not allowed to do till you're older. You can't drive my car, you can't try alcohol, it's just the way it is. Number one, Kim K's trendy dress code. It may come as no surprise, but Kim Kardashian and Kanye West's kids are expected to always be fashionable. That means no walking out of the house in pajamas or in mismatched socks. As two very visible public figures and as style icons themselves, both Kim and Kanye want to make sure that their kids match them in fashion. That means only dressing in the latest styles and carefully coordinating outfits, sometimes with each other even in order to be photo ready at all times. So much for kid-like self-expression, these little ones have to work the paparazzi like adults. Number two, no sleepovers for culture. Sleepovers, fun with friends until late at night, prank phone calls, pizza, but culture, Cardi B's daughter, will be experiencing none of that. Why? Because Cardi has a strict no sleepover ever policy. Cardi's own mother instituted the same rule when Cardi was a kid, but Cardi was a rebel and often broke her mother's rules. Now, as an adult, Cardi sees the sense in her mother's judgment. After having lived a rough life and gotten into trouble more than once, the rapper applies the same rule to her own daughter in order to ensure a happy and safe childhood. Overprotective or caring mother, it's clear that Cardi just wants what's best for culture. Number three. Megan Fox's no internet or TV rule. Wouldn't it be nice if kids were less addicted to the internet and TV? Megan Fox sure thinks so. And as a result, her kids are prohibited from both. I mean, sure, some celeb parents limit screen time, but in Megan's house, it is a big, fat, across the board, no. For one, the kids are not allowed to use computers until eighth grade. So no World Wide Web until then. And because Megan finds TV to be so nonstop, it is altogether prohibited in her household. She does, however, allow her kids to watch movies as they have a start and end. So no binge fest for these tykes. Number four, Beyonce's motorcade for kids. While most of us walked, biked, or got to school in our parents' sedan, Beyonce's kids get a full-on motorcade with security. That's right, the Carter children are not let out of the house without a full-on entourage. Perhaps Beyonce just wants her kids treated like the music royalty they are. Or maybe she just wants them to be safe. Whatever the reason, no leaving the house until the motorcade shows up. Is that clear? Number five, Gigi's multicultural combos. And on the softer side of things is Gigi Hadid and Zayn Malik's approach to parenting, multicultural style. As both the model and singer are first-gen kids themselves, they feel a responsibility to be the bridge of multiculturalism for their daughter, Kai, and engage in conversations about their mixed identities with her so that she can grow up proud and with her own sense of self. As Gigi tells People, I think that Kai will grow up feeling out the way that she can or wants to be a bridge for her different ethnicities. But I think that it will be nice to be able to have those conversations and see where she comes from with it without us putting that onto her. I think we can give these two an A for mature parenting. Number six, no microwaves at Courtney's place. Microwaves are great for those of us on the go and in need of a quick meal, but for Courtney Kardashian, they are a thing to be avoided at all costs. So when any of her kids need a quick snack or need to heat a meal, they have to wait for their food to warm on the stovetop. Why, you might ask? Well, Courtney believes that the toxins from plastic containers seep into food when microwaved, and she will have none of that around her kids. Courtney is known to eat clean, as they say, and to be very health conscious, especially when it comes to her kids. So it really should come as no surprise that microwaves are out. Number seven, JLo's homework before technology rule. Getting kids to do their homework can be a Herculean task for some parents. 
But for JLo, the rule of no technology until all papers are written and equations are solved seems to work. Kids Emmy, Mary Bell, David, and Maximilian are not allowed onto any kind of technology until their homework is done. Hmm, this sounds like an especially good rule if you want kids with good grades. Number eight, masked visitors only at Kylie's house. Kylie Jenner may be a young mom, but that doesn't mean she doesn't have all the traits of an overprotective mama bear. While Stormy and her little brother, official name is still to be announced, live and play in the lap of luxury and have many freedoms themselves, those who come to see them do not. Visitors outside the family and staff are expected to wear medical masks when around the children in order to protect the kiddos from germs and infections. Kylie, ever the trendsetter, was enforcing masks long before COVID and will be long after as well. Number nine, Courtney's silk pillowcases. And while we're on a Jen Dashian streak, we might as well include another one of Courtney's more uh, unconventional rules, silk pillowcases for all the kids. That's right, these tykes are not laying their heads down on high thread count Egyptian cotton. Rather, they're going to bed on luxurious silk. Studies have shown that silk pillowcases reduce the appearance of wrinkles over time. Courtney's getting ahead and ensuring that her little one's skin stays youthful, healthy, and taut for the long haul. Hey, you know, maybe we should all give silk pillowcases a go. Number 10. No tablets for the royal kids. Sometimes a tablet does well to quiet a fussy kid, but the royal children will have to make do without. Kate Middleton and Prince William do not allow their children George, Charlotte, and Louis access to the likes of any smart gadgets, such as iPads and iPhones. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry took after the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge's example and instituted the same rule for little Archie. Who says being a royal doesn't come with its downsides? Number 11. Kristen Bell's Bedtime Lock-In Some kids are fussy sleepers, not wanting to go to bed and all. Others sneak out to the living room to catch late night TV while mom and dad snooze. But not in Kristen Bell's household. Bell locks her daughter Delta into her room once it's lights out. We certainly think that this one is on the more extreme side of the rule spectrum. Don't you? Number 12. No high carb food for Gwyneth Paltrow's kids. Mother of goop and all around huh machine, Gwyneth Paltrow has a lot of strict rules for herself and her kids. Paltrow often gives insights about her family life on her Goop blog, and while known for having a strict diet herself, she enforces the same rules upon her kids. Apple and Moses are not allowed a high-carb food diet. That's right, no cinnamon rolls or cakes for these two. Additionally, the kids are not allowed any gluten. So you know, no bread either. Looks like Paltrow takes her kids' health seriously, to say the least. Number 13. Jessica Alba's punishment practice. When kids misbehave, some go to their room, some get no dessert, others lose internet privileges. In Jessica Alba's household, however, when you do something bad, you stand facing the wall until you're released. Alba and husband Cash Warren use this archaic rule in their house to bring down the hammer when necessary. Guess their three kids, Honor, Hayes, and Haven, can describe in perfect detail the color of the Alba Warren household's walls. Number 14, Julia Roberts's no junk food rule. What parent doesn't want their kid to eat healthy? Julia Roberts takes it a little further for her three kids, Hazel, Phineas, and Henry. Roberts bans sweets and junk food altogether, as the proud mom is just watching out for her kids' health in the long run. However, the actress isn't so rigid as to not permit the occasional sweet or snack. The rule is suspended on special occasions. Well done, Julia. Well done. Number 15. Kate Winslet's strict bedtime for kids. Ever tried to get a toddler to bed? Or even a kid, for that matter? There are fewer arduous tasks than getting a kid to go to sleep at a sensible hour. But while her kids are small, Kate Winslet manages to get the job done by enforcing a very strict and early bedtime. 7.30 p.m. to be exact. She also doesn't allow any jumping on the beds as she views the game to be dangerous. Guest bedtime and beds in the Winslet household are no laughing matter. You don't get a childhood back. It's this is it, mm. you know, that's it for children. It's right now. Like we said, parenting is hard. And when fame is in the mix, parenting gets a whole lot more complicated. 
and sometimes laying down the law is necessary to keep celeb kids safe and in check. You'll never believe which classic board game the royal kids aren't allowed to play. Now that some of the royal kids are getting older, there are even more rules they have to follow. The next generation of the British royal family is growing up with everything they could ever want. But that life doesn't come without a cost. Here are all the strict rules the royal kids must follow. And you can't look down to read the speech. You have to take the speech up. Number one, bowing or curtsying in the queen's presence. The kids aren't obligated to do any particular greetings when they're around their family, but most royals follow the same polite behavior. It's customary to bow your head when greeting a male royal and a curtsy when meeting a female royal. And of course, there's the famous royal wave initiated by the queen. Little Princess Charlotte has also picked up on the elegant hand wave too. And while touching royalty is usually frowned upon, princes will usually accept a formal handshake from dignitaries, presidents, and prime ministers. Number two, they have to accept gifts, but can't keep them. When out at events or appearances, the royal family sometimes gets gifts from their subjects. In 2014 alone, Prince George received 774 presents. Whether it's clothing, flowers, or a teddy bear, they are required to accept the gifts graciously. I mean, that's just being polite. The funny part is, they may not be allowed to keep the gifts they get. With security protocols, food and drinks have to be checked before being consumed. And as for the kids, they're probably not allowed to keep everything they're gifted. That's fair, they probably have more than enough toys as it is. Number three, studying multiple languages. Everyone in the family knows more than one language, which comes in handy while dealing with foreign representatives and traveling to other countries. The queen is fluent in French, and Prince William can converse in French, Welsh, and Swahili. Now, George and Charlotte are practicing Spanish with a tutor. And although the kids probably play plenty of educational games, none of the family are allowed to play one popular classic board game. In this royal household, Monopoly is banned. Number four, wardrobe restrictions. You know those days when you stay in your pajamas until noon only to switch into sweatpants? The royal kids don't have that option. Members of the royal family have to follow a strict dress code that doesn't allow them to ever dress overly casual, even while just hanging out with family or friends. As a marker of class and etiquette, younger boys like Prince Louis are only supposed to wear shorts, no trousers. In royal life, long pants are reserved for older boys and men. They're also expected to stick to neutral patterns and avoid anything too loud. Another rule that's probably a little easier to follow is no tiaras for little Charlotte or Lily Bet. In the royal family, only married women are allowed to don the bedazzled headband jewelry. While Kate Middleton is known for her love of fashion and fun clothing, she finds a way to maintain the conservative dress code while still looking trendy. We can't wait to see how her kids interpret their own versions of royal fashion. Number five, perfect etiquette. While dining with the family, the royal kids are learning all about etiquette rules to follow at the table. The kids are learning how to sit and eat at a table properly, how to attend formal events, and meet important people. Part of etiquette training even involves learning how to keep your voice at the right level and dressing appropriately for any given situation. Another important rule while dining in the queen's presence is to never announce that you're going to the bathroom. If you have to get up to use the restroom, you just get up quietly and excuse yourself. Quietly leaving a room usually isn't one of most kids' strengths, but these royal youngsters are more well-behaved than your average toddlers and school kids. Number six, public appearances. For the time being, the royal kids' main job is school, but like their parents, they still have obligations to attend certain events, ceremonies, and public appearances. It's all in a day's work as a royal. Luckily, despite the paparazzi that follows them around, the kids still get a bit of privacy at events. The public isn't allowed to ask for autographs or selfies. A pleasant handshake is usually allowed though. Number seven, dating rules. The kids of Prince Harry and Prince William are obviously too young to start dating, but someday they'll be ready to find their own significant others. When that day comes, there will be some serious rules and protocols to follow while dating. But hey, that's the cost of dating a prince or princess. And when the younger royal generation do decide they're ready to get married, 
they can't just propose to anyone they want. According to the Royal Marriages Act of 1772, royal descendants must ask approval from the queen before getting married, and their wedding outfits need to be approved too. Number 8. Private School Only Most parents have the choice of where they want their kids to school, but the royal princes and princesses must go to private school. It's actually a modern move after generations of royal kids being educated at home by governesses. Queen Elizabeth and her sister, Princess Margaret, were taught at home by tutors. Prince William's two oldest kids started their education off with formal nursery school as toddlers before private elementary school. Both are currently attending school in London and will likely later head off to boarding school in their early teens. Both William and Harry took a gap year to travel before going to university. Will their kids follow in their footsteps? Number 9. Who Gets to Rule? This may not be a rule they're all for, but the royal kids are at the mercy of the royal secession to the throne. A law that's likely caused some sibling rivalries over the last few centuries. Prince George is currently third in line to the throne after his father and grandfather. Next comes his sister Charlotte, followed by Louis. Prince Harry's son Archie is seventh in line, and Lily Bet is eighth. Prince Beatrice's daughter, Sienna, who was born just last year, is also in line at number 11, while Princess Eugenie's little August is number 13. Number 10. Where they can live. When they get older and fly the nest, most of the royal kids won't be going very far. That is, if they don't decide to move to California. Most of the royal family members live in one of the royal residences, and we don't blame them. Firstly, there's the 775-room Buckingham Palace, Balmoral Castle is the Scottish residence of the family, which they use as a weekend hunting getaway. Sandringham House functions as a countryside retreat, while some have taken up residence at Clarence House, Kensington Palace, and Frogmore House. Kate and William's kids enjoy their lavish lifestyle at Kensington Palace, where although considered an apartment, their home has four floors and a massive private garden. Number 11. Religious Practices all of Kate Middleton and Prince William's kids were baptized with the Church of England. The royal family's connection to the church dates back to the 15th century. Even Meghan Markle joined the church officially when she became part of the family. So it's no surprise that the kids have to endure some long morning services every now and then. In addition to following royal protocols on religious choices, the kids will also eventually have to follow the same rules as their parents regarding politics. Royal family members are supposed to remain impartial and never discuss political opinions in public. Number 12. Traveling Separately A well-known rule that all the royal families are supposed to follow, including the kids, is that heirs can't fly together. The rule was put in place when air travel was more dangerous than it is today. Technically, Prince William and his oldest son, Prince George, are not supposed to ever be on the same plane. The rule is even stricter for heirs over the age of 12. But Kate and William had the rule loosened for their family since it's much easier flying together as a family when they have to go somewhere, especially now that the kids outnumber the parents. Number 13. Healthy Food Only Prince William's kids and the rest of the royal family, for that matter, eat extremely healthy meals. There's no packaged food or takeout allowed at the royal residences. Why would they, when they have 20 round-the-clock professional chefs at their service? The Queen's personal chef, Darren McGrady, revealed that even the babies of the family get homemade meals of blended chicken and veggies. It's also very unlikely that the kids get any shellfish at dinner. It's an unwritten rule that the royal family avoids shellfish since it's more likely to cause food poisoning. A quote from palace staff read, Garlic is banned from being included in foods eaten by royal family members. With many meetings between official visitors, it is thought to be advised against to prevent any awkward bad breath. Number 14. Respecting the Queen with the Queen being not only the figurehead of the country, but of her own family, the British royals have to follow some rules of respect when she's around. For example, the kids already know that when the Queen enters a room, everyone must stand. And when she says dinner is over, too bad. If you're not finished with your meal, dinner is over. Her family and the kids also know that everyone walking with the Queen has to walk behind her and never in front. And that includes her late husband, Prince Philip. That's a lot of rules for these kids to follow when hanging out with great grandma. Number 15, independence early on. 
Sure, the royal family has earned a reputation of being cold, but when it comes to raising the kids, they have a good reason. Kate and William follow the no-coddle rule, which allows their kids to gain maturity and independence from a young age. They are, however, famously more hands-on than some of their predecessors. These kids may be young, but they already have a ton of rules to follow. Which of these royal kiddos do you think will stick with royal life once they have a choice? Living daily life with Beyonce and Jay-Z may sound like a dream come true for Queen Bey and Hova fans. For Blue Ivy, Rumi, and Sir Carter, it's just a regular day following mom and dad's rules or getting spoiled by Grandma Tina. Regardless of their celebrity status, Beyonce and Jay-Z are focused on family first, which comes with its own structure and rules. Number 1. Being Present Money isn't everything for this billionaire couple. In fact, when it comes to their kids, showering them with gifts is not their main priority. Spending time with them is. Queen Bey told Al it could be stressful balancing life as Queen Bey and mom. Making sure I'm present for my kids, dropping Blue off at school, taking Rumi and Sir to their activities, all while running a company can be challenging. But as Jay-Z said, time is all you have. And it seems like Jay-Z's favorite pastime with his daughter is attending games. Number two, confidence is key. It's only natural the person behind the empowerment anthem, Run the World, would ensure her kids grow up feeling confident in themselves. So much so that Jay-Z and Beyonce decided to take things a step further by hiring a confidence coach. Sources close to the family told the National Enquirer in 2017 that the coach worked with Blue one-on-one, -on -one, dancing, singing, drawing, and learning about different successful women of color. Number 3. Nannies on Deck Juggling work and life is a little more manageable with more hands on deck. And Beyonce and Jay-Z knew they were going to need all the help they could get once the twins, Rumi and Sir, were born. To ensure the twins' knees were covered while Beyonce was in eight months of intensive rehearsals and preparation, they hired three nannies for each baby, working on rotation in eight-hour shifts because the twins were on different sleep schedules. Number 4. Wherever Bay goes, the kids follow. Because family is so important to Beyonce, and she wants to spend as much time as possible with them, her rule is her kids go wherever she goes. On vacation, on red carpets, performing at the Oscars, or even sleeping. Beyonce's kids are never too far. When Blue was still a baby, Beyonce spoke to Oprah about how much motherhood had changed her. It's clear now that her love for closeness has only grown since the twins joined the family, as she's starting to bring them along for the ride too. Number 5. The Carter Children Handbook If you're thinking of becoming a nanny for the Carters, with the potential to earn $100,000, you'll have to read and sign the detailed manual for taking care of the Carter children. In the biography, Becoming Beyonce, The Untold Story, by J. Randy Terabarelli, he shared that Beyonce's handbook titled a Daily Program for Blue Ivy as per Miss Carter had all the strict rules the nannies would have to follow. It also acted as a contract that the nannies would sign as a work agreement. Number 6. Positive Representation As Beyoncé wrote in her September 2018 Vogue piece, they don't have to be a certain type or fit into a specific category. They don't have to be politically correct as long as they're authentic, respectful, compassionate, and empathetic. And especially for her son, Sir, she's raising him to be the ultimate Sir, and hopes to create better representation for him to reach his full potential. Number 7. Personal Style Always On Point Blue Ivy has always had a passion for fashion. Her seventh birthday party had a runway and fashion show. But she also has help picking looks from longtime stylist Manuel Mendez. Manuel started working with Beyonce as a wardrobe assistant on her I Am tour in 2009, and later started working as Blue's personal shopper and stylist when she was born. He styled this gold look for the second annual wearable art gala, and he's also started doing some styling for Rumi and Sir, like their adorable ensemble for Blue's rose gold 7th birthday. Number 8. Follow Their Own Path Blue Ivy is already a Grammy winner for her credit in Brown Skin Girl and made history as the youngest person ever to win a Grammy. But Jay-Z and Beyonce aren't raising any of their kids to be the next Jayonces in music or business, just supporting their passions. Jay-Z told the Sunday Times, feeling loved is the most important thing a child needs, you know? not." Here's this business that I'm going to hand over to you that I'm creating for you. Number 9. 
not your average school run. It may seem like a chore, but it's one Beyonce and Jay-Z don't skip out on. But school drop-offs for the daughter of some of the most famous people in the world can't be what's considered ordinary. Sometimes they involve teaching moments of self-awareness, like when Blue told Jay-Z to essentially watch his tone. I didn't like when you told me to get in the car the way you told me. But one thing is for sure, these parents are hands-on with everything school-related, and we're sure it may have caused a little stir at first, seeing Beyonce and Jay-Z in the drop-off line, but they're just two parents doing parent things. Number 10. Chilling Out Beyonce knows the importance of decompressing and finding time to be at peace. She said it was the long lockdown period that taught her to slow down. Beyonce told Harper's Bazaar about different practices and rituals, with honey and baths she started using for healing and relaxing. She said, One of my most satisfying moments as a mom is when I found Blue one day soaking in the bath with her eyes closed, using blends I created and taking time for herself to decompress and be at peace. I have so much to share. Number 11. Keeping Things Private Beyonce and Jay-Z don't always share too much on social media. In fact, Jay-Z doesn't share anything at all because he's not active on any platforms. For Beyonce, it was more important for her to set boundaries of how much she shares of her personal life. For some time, we got nothing. Now, Beyonce is opening up more about her personal life, especially since Lemonade put a lot of it out there. But there's still so much she hasn't shared to protect her privacy, which extends to her children too. She said, I fought to protect my sanity and my privacy because the quality of my life depends on it. Number 12, polyglots in the making. Blue showed off her Spanish skills with her mother in her little cameo in Beyonce's Mi Gente remix and even while on the phone with her dad. Rapper Meek Mill said the reason he upgraded his son's school was because he heard Blue speaking to her dad on the phone in Spanish. The son reported that Beyonce and Jay-Z specifically wanted French-speaking nannies so their kids could learn French from an early age. Number 13. Mommy Time some rules are bound to be broken when kids are involved. Sometimes Bay needs a break from running the world with five minutes of relaxing in her bath. She shared in her Adidas Ivy Park video, part of her quarantine routine was getting five minutes alone every day. But her kids don't care if she's Beyonce, and sometimes they were five interrupted minutes. Number 14. Anything goes with Grandma Tina. It's clear Tina Lawson not only has a close relationship with her daughters, but with her grandkids too. She shows them off any chance she can on social media, and she's been very vocal about loving life as Grandma Tina. But one thing you shouldn't count on Grandma Tina on is following mom and dad's rules. She told people she buys the noisy gifts, spoils them with trips to Paris and gifts, and lets them wear outfits that Beyonce may not approve of. Or as Blue said, my mom would be mad because she's doing too much. Number 15. Life on the Road We already know Jay-Z and Beyonce are as hands-on as they come and won't let their work schedule get in the way of spending time with their family. This is why they opt to just take the family on the road when touring. For the On The Run 2 tour, Jay and Bay brought Blue and the twins along, physically and artistically, with images of the family playing on the screens for their tour. To make it work, they have their team of nannies travel with them, just so Mr. and Ms. Carter can do their jobs. It's clear from these rules, love is at the center of the Carter household. Now that Kim's kids are getting older, North Chicago Saint and Som have some upgraded house rules. Here's how Kim Kardashian is parenting her kids post-divorce. Number 1. No Live Streaming Northwest went live and ran into Kim's bedroom with the camera showing Kim in bed. LOL. Y'all, North is going to make Chris work so hard. Mom, I'm live! <laughs> no, stop. You're not allowed to. Last December, Kim's oldest daughter, Northwest, went live on TikTok, which was totally against the Kardashian West household rules. North was just eight years old when she decided to defy her mom's rules and give her fans what they desperately wanted, an amateur, shaky, giggle-filled tour of the family's house. Well, stop making weird sounds, right? North went live on the app, having a blast, showing her many followers around her home, giving them a behind-the-scenes look at the famous family's house. The fun stopped when North entered her mom's bedroom and Kim realized what was going on. With everything Kim has been through in her career, before and after kids, it's no wonder she's not letting her kids browse the internet unmonitored. Number 2. TikTok Rules 
If I was Kim, I would just deny everything and pretend it didn't happen to my kids. Kim later responded to her daughter going live, admitting that she lets her kids use social media when they're being monitored. She also said that she doesn't really blame North for being so open on social media, adding that she probably gets it from her father, Kanye. She said, I mean, Northwest is Kanye West's daughter. Forget that. She's his twin, so she will still definitely do all of the above. Right. Not like she doesn't also have a mother who's queen of the gram. Number 3. One-on-one -on -one time Maybe one of the most important rules that Kim has for her kids is that they all get some one-on-one -on -one time with mom. In a post to Instagram, Kim shared a photo of her and her son Saint, captioning the post, Mommy and Son Day Today. With four kids and multiple businesses to run, it's probably hard to give each kid their individual mommy time, but Kim makes it a priority in her household. Number 4. Makeup Rules as the owner of a major cosmetics brand, it's only natural that Kim lets her kids experiment with makeup and beauty looks. It's always so much fun. North has also been trying her hand at costume makeup and special effects makeup, which Kim shared to socials writing, My Creative Baby. Kim has also said she's into letting her kids express themselves, whether it's through makeup, clothes, or art. Of her daughter North's painting hobby, she said, I love seeing the personality and the moods and everything that she goes through and is feeling. It's really been an amazing hobby of hers. Okay, I think that's enough foundation. <laughs> Number 5. Co-parenting with Kanye Even though Kim and Kanye had some rocky times post-divorce in 2021, the pair are now well on their way to co-parenting their kids amicably. It was recently revealed that Kanye has been spending time with the kids. Despite claiming he didn't receive an invite, the rapper was in attendance at Little Chicago's recent birthday party. After the event, Ye shared on Instagram saying, I just came from Cheese Party and I got a shout out to Travis Scott for sending me the address and the time and making sure that I was able to spend that birthday memory with my daughter to be there with the rest of the family. As for Kim, no matter what happens, she'll have Kanye's back. She said, I'm always just hopeful and no matter what goes on, it's the father of my kids. I'll always be protective. You could be so hurt or angry at your ex, but I think in front of the kids, it always has to be, your dad's the best. Number six, Pete's involvement. Getting to know him, he's really, truly like the nicest human being. Now that Kim and SNL star Pete Davidson are officially dating, the star opened up about how she's also letting her new guy into her kids' lives. Although Kim does have some strict rules when it comes to parenting her kids, she's also open to letting them experience new things and people. I think you guys will definitely see my perspective. He's not opposed to it. Pete has slowly been getting to know the four kids, but Kim isn't rushing the relationship, letting it happen as the kids feel comfortable. As for whether Pete is good with kids, I mean, he's basically a big kid himself. This is a man's game, son! <laughs> Number 7. More Kids? I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling really dirty tonight. Is four kids enough? Some fans are now speculating that given Kim's relationship with Pete Davidson, the KKW beauty owner may be ready to add another kid to her crew. While Kourtney Kardashian shared that she wants two more kids with her new husband, Travis Barker, Kim also hinted that she may be into having kids with Pete. Only time will tell. Number 8. Photo Ops Welcome Kim is constantly sharing photos of her kids on social media. While some celeb parents prefer to keep their children's faces away from the public eye, Kim knows the value of some good publicity and doesn't mind letting her little ones show their cuteness for all the world to see. Okay, one second, let me finish How talking. You know because of Kim's social media rules and allowing her children to participate in filming for TV and photo shoots, we definitely see a career in entertainment in these kids' futures. Number 9. No Timeouts Kim added that even though she believes in disciplining her kids when necessary, the whole timeout thing didn't go over well in their house. Kim revealed that once, when she sent North to timeout, the little girl took it as a positive and gave herself a relaxing spa day. Hey, she learned from the best! Now, Kim believes in letting her kids learn organically, meaning that timeouts aren't always the most constructive way to discipline. Number 10. Style Matters since the beginning of her career, Kim has been fully immersed in the world of fashion. Kim's kids also follow their mom's fashion rules and can usually be seen wearing the latest trends and high-end fashion brands. North, in particular, has been showing off her individual style lately and showing the world what it means to be a trendsetter before the age of 10. North had her own stylist by the age of 2 years old and was posed for the cover of Beauty Inc. at just 5. Number 11. Work Ethic Lessons Get your Ass up and work. Growing up, Kim learned about hard work from her parents, especially the hardworking momager Kris Jenner. 
These days, Kim is making sure her kids know the value of work ethic and make sure they see both of their parents working hard for the life they live. With multiple businesses, shows, and brands, nobody can say Kim doesn't work hard. Number 12. Tight Schedule With four kids and a full-time job, Kim keeps her household ship sailing smoothly by making sure that everyone runs on a tight, strict schedule. That means scheduling in time for work, naps, meals, vacations, playtime, and yes, even cuddle time is penciled in. Kim makes sure to schedule in 15 minutes of cuddle time with the kiddos every day. Aww! Number 13. Family First as always, Kim and her siblings know that family should come first. That's why all the little Car Jenner kids are more like siblings than cousins. Chicago and Stormy recently celebrated their birthdays together, and it's common for these kids to share joint celebrations. Kim makes sure that her kids know the value in staying close with family. And who knows? We may be seeing the second generation of the reality show series down the road. Number 14. Cleanliness is next to Kardashian-ness With a house that's almost entirely white, it was no wonder that Kim liked to keep things clean when the kids were young. This mama four had no choice but to eliminate certain messy toys and foods after her kids made messes in their architectural digest-worthy masterpiece of a home. Once, Kim's kids decided that the family's concrete bathtub looked like a great canvas for their coloring project. Another time, Kim had to switch to white cheddar snacks only after the kids got Cheeto powder all over her white furniture. She said, thank God for white cheddar Cheetos instead of the orange Cheetos. I had to switch. Number 15. Religion, their choice. Like you put me in such an uncomfortable situation. Even though Kim's ex has shared that he's very serious about religion, Kim is taking a different approach to her kids, following a spiritual path. Kim's kids are given a good example, but are also allowed to make their own choices when it comes to going to church or what they believe. Love it! Number 16. Nannies. Even with plenty of rules in place to avoid chaos and maintain order, Kim still needs some help with her kids. That's what nannies are for. Luckily, Kim and her siblings have access to some great childcare help, and Kim doesn't mind getting a helping hand when the family is out and about. She actually has a nanny assigned to each child to make sure everyone stays safe and happy. Number 17. Twins. While it's not necessarily a rule, Kim does love that some of her kids are turning into little mini-me's. She revealed that she thinks Little Saint is like her twin. Do you see the resemblance? Or does Chicago bear a more striking resemblance to the beauty queen mom? Whether or not Kim's kids end up looking more like her or their dad Kanye, they're really adorable. Number 18. Hair extensions okay. She is allowed twice a year on her birthday and birthday party. This pic was taken back in June on her B-Day. Kim is a big fan of both hair extensions and wigs, and is known to add volume and length to her hair for events and red carpet appearances. And although her kids are still young, she's alright with letting them play with different hairstyles. When North was younger, she also let her straighten her hair once in a while, being sure to also show her some gorgeous natural hairstyles to rock her unique beauty. Number 19 private bodyguards. To make sure everyone stays safe when the family is out in public, Kim has private bodyguards assigned to the kids. Though they have a lot of privileges, these famous toddlers and near teens don't have the same freedom as most kids their age. North Saint, Chicago, and Sam have to be super careful when they're in public with paparazzi around. Sorry, North. Oh, so cute. Yeah. Number 20. No keeping up with the Kardashians. Yet. One of the most important rules in the Kardashian household, the kids are still not allowed to watch the family on TV. Hey, there's some pretty heavy material in those early Keeping Up with the Kardashian seasons. Would you let your kids watch you getting into fights, partying, and arguing with your family? Probably not. It's no wonder that Kim is keeping her little ones away from the family's reality series for as long as possible. They're growing up so fast! With Kim shifting gears in her personal life, it only makes sense that some of her rules for her kids are also changing. Khloe Kardashian makes her three-year-old daughter True follow some pretty strict rules. Are any fans surprised that Khloe Kardashian keeps her house in order using a strict routine, schedule, and organization? The Good American founder revealed that even though she and her sisters have a lot in common, she doesn't always agree with their styles of parenting. When it comes to raising True, Chloe sticks to some very strict rules. And I just feel like it's now time to have another kid. Yep. Strict schedule for bedtime. In her mom confessions interview with Ellen DeGeneres, Chloe confessed that her big parenting must is having a schedule and sticking to it. The Keeping Up with the Kardashians alum said, I'm really strict. I have a schedule. I'm very militant with how I parent True. 
and I believe that a schedule saves everything. It totally makes sense that having set bedtimes is helpful for keeping three-year-old True in check. Meal Routine In addition to a strict schedule, Chloe also said that having set meal times is a lifesaver. Kids thrive on routine, and that's something that Chloe takes seriously. Since turning her health kick into a permanent lifestyle, Chloe has been eating healthy and knows a lot about nutrition that she can pass on to her daughter. In an interview with USA Today, Chloe once shared that eating healthy is about more than just staying fit. She said, It shows how strong I am, mentally. Chloe's balanced diet includes a morning shake, fruit throughout the day, and meals with plenty of protein like chicken, eggs, almonds, and veggies. Organization Fans of the star in her various reality shows already know that organization is a huge part of Chloe's life. It's what allows her to run multiple businesses, be a social media influencer, raise her daughter, and spend quality time with family and friends. Chloe said, I'm incredibly clean and organized. I like everything in its place. I'm very regimented. The star also admitted that she's passing on her intense need for organization to True. Chloe said that the three-year-old already loves everything to be in its proper spot. Chloe said, I don't want that for True, but she already has so much of that. I feel so bad she has so much of it so young, but every toy has to be put back exactly where she got it from. Not from me. That's what she does. Hard work. Chloe shared that although True seems to be taking on her cleaning habits, she doesn't push the organization rules on her daughter, telling True, it's okay to live in a mess. Even though Chloe says that messes make her cringe inside. Something Chloe does hope that True inherits is her strong work ethic. In April of 2021, Forbes reported that Chloe's net worth was around 40 million. Thanks to her work on her family's shows and her various spin-offs, the mom of one has also built up her own empire over the years, creating her Good American clothing line, The Revenge Body Project, a popular true crime series, and a long list of endorsement deals. No keeping up with the Kardashians. The reality show that ran for 20 seasons wasn't always family friendly. Chloe, Kim, Courtney, and the rest of the gang got into some heated arguments on camera that didn't always end with kind words. So, yeah, we get why Chloe won't let her daughter watch the show, at least until she's a little older. Maybe it's the baby. Maybe she's, you know, Don't rolling bring true into this. Of course, that doesn't include the occasional kid friendly YouTube video from time to time. Chloe admitted that when she takes True out to restaurants, she often lets the toddler watch videos on her phone to help her stay calm and relaxed in the public setting. No, Grandma Chris. True isn't the only youngster who's forced to follow this hilarious rule in the Car Jenner family. Chris may be a grandmother to nearly 11 grandkids, but she does not want to be called Grandma. Chris definitely isn't your typical grandmother. The momager revealed that North, Mason, Penelope, and the other older kids call her Lovey. Chris told Daily Mail, At first I was Grandma, and all of a sudden I didn't like the way that sounded. My mom had a friend called Lovey, and I thought that was the cutest name. True, Stormy, Chicago, and the other younger kids probably will also be forbidden from using the G word around Chris. Quality family time Saying the Kardashian and Jenner family are close is an understatement. Chloe and her sisters don't always get along, but they know how important it is to spend time together and often go on vacation as a family, or host family-only birthday parties for the siblings and cousins to bond. Chloe also ensures that True spends time with the other side of her family and recently shared a fun outing with Tristan Thompson's son, Prince, whom he shares with his ex, Jordan Craig. True and Prince are close in age, and the NBA player shared some snaps of the kids enjoying an arcade. One-on-one -on -one time Despite all the challenges of motherhood, Chloe shared that being a parent has allowed her to become more empathetic. She said, I'm so in love and obsessed with my daughter and seeing life through her eyes. I wouldn't change a thing. Chloe also sees spending time alone with True as super important, doing her best to be a hands-on parent. The star pointed out that three is the best age and that she can't wait until True is a little older and they can have some in-depth bestie conversations. Recently, the mother and daughter duo both tested positive for COVID and were quarantined alone at home. The silver lining? Getting in some quality one-on-one -on -one time together. Different from her sisters Chloe also recently revealed that her strict parenting styles, ruse, and routine don't quite jive with all of her other sisters and the way they choose to parent their kids. Chloe said, Not all of my siblings are the same. But the star wasn't interested in revealing who she was referring to, saying, I'll not tell you which ones. It's pretty obvious, however, that Chloe is talking about Courtney's relaxed parenting choices. Honesty. Chloe was quick to admit that she doesn't know everything and sometimes struggles with finding the right way to deal with True. She said, 
The warning is, no one really knows what they're doing. So true. Chloe also said, we all just pretend that we do, and I don't care how many kids you have, I think it's exhausting for everyone. No unsolicited advice. Parents of young kids keep constantly dealing with advice coming from every direction. Especially since Chloe had sisters with kids already, she's likely heard all kinds of parenting advice and suggestions from fans and social media comments on how to raise true. Some advice is great, but it's also not what you say, it's how you say it. In an interview with Cosmopolitan UK, Chloe addresses the issue, saying, I've learned that you can't just post anything because people will comment and say the craziest things. People give unsolicited commentary no matter what you do, so I try and keep true stuff as clear and as simple as I can for her sake. I don't want that energy on my child. Leave her alone. Luckily, Chloe knows that for her daughter, she knows best and is raising true the way she sees fit. Co-parenting rules. Even when Chloe and Tristan Thompson aren't officially together, they maintain True's regular routine and have become experts at co-parenting. With two busy careers and schedules, it helps to keep things organized. Chloe has shared that she is True's primary parent, but she encourages Tristan to have an active role in his daughter's life. In the summer of 2021, the pair were fully submerged in a healthy co-parenting routine that allowed them to get along, take care of True, and avoid any unnecessary drama. Although, a little drama never hurt anyone. Stylish parties only. This may not be a hard rule for the Car Jenners, but it seems like the go big or go home mindset applies to any parties or events hosted by the fam. Kids' birthdays aren't excluded from the habit of throwing lavish, over the top nights of fun. For True's third birthday, Chloe went all out, putting together an incredible Disney princess themed party. Chloe and True wore matching lavender dresses, posing in rooms filled with balloons. True had visits from some special guests like Elsa from Frozen and Tiana from The Princess and the Frog. Physical Activity The Revenge Body Star knows the ins and outs of staying in shape and works hard to maintain a healthy lifestyle. That's definitely something that Chloe is passing on to her daughter. With a professional athlete for a dad, we can bet that True will have a love of a sport and exercise as she gets older. For now, Chloe is bringing True to weekly gymnastics lessons. True also showed off her gravity-defying skills in a recent video from her classes. Body Positivity Chloe has been open about the struggles she faced with self-love and body positivity. In an interview with Health Magazine, the Revenge Body star said, I've actually always had a really unhealthy relationship with food. When asked what led to her insecurities, Chloe said, I guess just from society or how people critiqued my body adding that she doesn't want True to go down the same path. Chloe said she wants to teach True about healthy eating so that she can be confident and happy. She said, so it really is not about physical appearance. That's a byproduct. You can tell when someone is genuinely happy from the inside out. The Kardashians make parenting look easy on television. Rise and shine. But being in the spotlight 24-7 is really hard. That's why the reality TV stars want to make sure that their kids learn some self-control, even if it means enforcing a set of strict rules that most people would think are kind of harsh. Kylie won't let Stormy outside. Most parents are afraid to let their kids go outside, but then again, most people don't live in a lavish, gated community in Hidden Hills, right? But Kylie's been implementing that rule for her daughter, Stormy, way before officials begged us to practice social distancing. I, the reason why I kept it a secret is because I didn't leave the house. You see, toward the end of her pregnancy, Kylie had to hide between walls because helicopters were constantly flying over her house every day in order to get photos. It got to the point where she was too scared to even step foot outside her home. After Stormy was born, she was afraid to let her daughter go outside even for a little while, and she has no intention of backing down now. She wants her daughter to have a normal childhood away from the prying eyes of the media, and she'll do whatever it takes to maintain her privacy. So any loved ones or family members who want to see Stormy have to visit the house, because Kylie's determined to keep her baby indoors and sheltered from the world, no matter what it takes. In 2019, she told Interview, she really comes before me, so that is a lot to take in at a young age. But I feel I was definitely made for this. No TV for Stormy Limiting the amount of time a kid spends in front of the TV makes total sense to a lot of parents. It is usually advised that children who are two years old and up should get no more than one to two hours a day. But even though Stormy just turned two in 2020, Kylie's already enforcing a no TV rule for her. This is pretty ironic given that the Car Jenner's rise to fame was thanks to their unbelievably popular reality show, Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Although television is a huge part of their family, Kylie doesn't want her daughter any 
anywhere near it. And Stormy's dad, Travis Scott, has no qualms about this rule. He told Rolling Stone, Today kids are on iPads. There's so much technology they don't play outside anymore. With Stormy, no TV. That TV stuff is out. The Kylie isn't unfair. She often bends this rule and lets her precious baby watch some of her favorite films like Frozen 2 or Trolls. No makeup for North. It's not easy looking as flawless as the Car Jenners do, no matter how gorgeous they may look without any makeup. As you can imagine, there are some serious grooming, beauty treatments, and makeup tricks involved. The famous family has a glam team they can rely on, and they're the masterminds behind their signature flawless faces. But Kim doesn't mess around when it comes to makeup. She puts the face in game face, especially when it comes to contour. But that doesn't mean she wants the same thing for her daughter North, which is pretty weird for a family who's made a fortune selling their cosmetic lines. Kim has a strict rule about her daughter not wearing makeup. North, what are you doing with my Mario palette? Turn around. But that wasn't always the case. North has done makeup tutorials with her mother and even wore red lipstick for a Christmas family photo in 2018. But during an interview with E!, Kim revealed that her husband, Kanye West, wasn't so happy with the fact that North was wearing makeup. So they banned makeup altogether and removed any makeup from North's room. The beauty mogul mom says she does let her put on chapstick and lip smackers whenever she wants. But Kim also has a rule in place for when her daughter gets jealous of her siblings, and it's got the internet fuming over it. Kim's Jealousy Solutions Jealousy and rivalry between siblings is pretty common, even in the Kardashian household. Once a new baby is introduced to the family, the other kids start to wonder if they've been replaced or if their parents no longer love them as much. It's just the way kids are wired. Some need more attention than others, but when North was the only baby taking up Kim's time, everything ran smoothly. Then Saint, Chicago, and Psalm came along and spoiled all the fun for their sister North. But Kim's the kind of girl who can fix anything, even jealousy among her kids. Of course, it wasn't always easy. Kim told Ellen DeGeneres that North got very jealous whenever she saw her feeding Saint. In fact, things got so crazy that she stuck a tiny box of milk with a straw in her bra so she could drink from it and not feel left out. But sibling rivalry is often unavoidable, which is why it's always helpful to have a few tricks up your sleeve. Chloe's Co-Parenting Model Although Kris Jenner and the late Robert Kardashian divorced in 1991, the couple tried setting a good co-parenting example. Of course, things don't always work out the way they should, but Khloe Kardashian found the perfect way to co-parent with Tristan Thompson. According to the gorgeous reality TV star, a good co-parenting relationship can make a huge impact on children. It not only reduces stress, but also gives them a sense of security in spite of the fact that their parents have split up. She told Laura Wasser on her podcast, Divorce Sucks, that I never ever heard my parents talk disrespectfully about the other one. For me, True is one and a half month old, so she doesn't really know what's happening, so I do everything in my power to not put any heavy energy around her. So even though Chloe and Tristan Thompson are no longer together, they're certainly on the same page with what they feel is best for their daughter, True. She believes that her little girl can feel certain energies, so she certainly doesn't want her to experience any negative vibes between her and Tristan when they're all together. And someday, this will allow her daughter to recognize that she was more important than the conflict that ended her parents' relationship. Bottle Drinking Rob Kardashian was banned from posting on Instagram because of a little incident related to his ex, Black China. But that doesn't mean his family can't post on his behalf, like the time they posted a video of him with his daughter, Dream. Fans thought the video was seriously adorable, but a lot of people were immediately concerned after they saw it. Netizens were very confused over the fact that Dream is still drinking from a baby bottle even though she's three years old. One person commented that she should be drinking out of a sippy cup. Others felt that the bottle could hinder the child's development and prevent her from learning other things like potty training if she continues doing this. Courtney's Co-Sleeping Co-sleeping with kids is not uncommon, especially when children are very young or have nightmares. Not that Courtney seems to mind. Research suggests that kids who fall asleep on their own are able to fall asleep faster and stay asleep longer. So parents who allow their kids to co-sleep end up getting poor quality of sleep as they end up waking up more throughout the night. But Courtney doesn't care. I don't care, to be honest. 
she prefers to have her kids Mason, Penelope, and Rain Disick really close to her while she sleeps until they're ready to sleep on their own. This happened naturally with her oldest, Mason. She tried getting him to sleep in his own bed, but he wasn't ready, according to her. By the time he was seven, he started sleeping in his own room, and she didn't even bat an eyelash when it happened. She was happy that Mason was ready to cut the cord, and there's one thing she won't allow him anywhere near, and it's something most of us use every day. No microwaves. Anyone getting invited to Courtney's house will notice she doesn't have a microwave, and she believes she's got plenty of reason for that. When she had Mason, she started doing research on things that can be detrimental to your health. Along the way, she discovered a few things about microwaves that made her really uneasy. When I had Mason, I did a lot of health-related research and decided to get rid of my microwave when I read that toxins from plastic containers can be transferred to food when reheated, she said. She also read that microwaves have the power to supposedly rip away the nutritional benefits from food. Now there's no denying that microwaves are a quick and easy way to heat up food, but Courtney didn't want to take any chances with the lives of her kids, so she tossed hers out. But according to Harvard, her fears are totally unfounded. Microwaves cook food in a short amount of time. Adding tiny amounts of water causes the food to steam from the inside out. This helps the food retain more vitamins and minerals than a lot of other cooking methods. But Court isn't changing her mind. She doesn't believe in microwaves. But the toaster oven, she says, is solid. No plastic toys. If Penelope, Mason, or Rain want to play with Barbie dolls or action figures, they're out of luck because Courtney has banned all plastic toys in the house. She claims that plastic toys have more toxins than wooden toys. Even though toxic paints and stains are still prevalent in wooden toys, she also believes that non-plastic alternatives are less likely to break, even though wooden toys can get pulled apart and broken too. As far as being better for the environment, she's right to a certain degree. Plastic is made from petroleum, which is not a renewable resource source and creates more pollution versus wooden toys that are made from trees, which are renewable resources. But luckily, Court is not the type of mom who would judge others for having plastic toys in their house. She's more of a moderation in all things kind of girl. She doesn't think parents should just hurry and throw away all their plastic toys. But there's one rule that she'll never budge on, and it involves a word that's often said so much that even her momager slipped up. No F-words. Courtney believes that children should learn about body positivity from a young age, and sadly, the word fat is tied to a lot of negative connotations in today's culture. So Court doesn't allow that word to be used by her daughter, and anyone around her should avoid saying it in her presence, unless they want to make her mad. That's a lesson that Kris Jenner learned the hard way during a Keeping Up with the Kardashians episode. The momager asked Courtney, do you think I look fat? And her daughter quickly snapped back and said, don't use that word in front of my daughter, please. Courtney believes that teaching kids about self-love and self-worth are crucial, especially at an early age. So in order to keep Penelope and her boys from adopting negative expressions regarding appearance, she forbids anyone from using it as an insult in front of them. She hopes that this will prevent them from focusing on flaws or worrying about whether they can fit into a pair of jeans. She hopes they will grow up never using that word to criticize others because of their shape or size. So as long as they're living under her roof, they better not say the F word. No schedule. Not every day is the same, and neither are the tasks that life lays out for anyone on a daily basis. That's why Courtney has a no schedule rule for her kids. She feels that being so uptight with a structured schedule would suck the joy out of living. Scheduling makes more sense for grown-ups who have busy schedules and need to meet deadlines to be more productive. But the only thing her kids need to worry about for the moment is being happy kids. Scheduling tends to cause anxiety and stress, especially when things don't go exactly according to plan. It also keeps kids from from savoring every waking moment. So even though the Kardashians have crazy work schedules themselves, she prefers that her kids simply go with the flow so that they can stay in the moment and be happier. When it comes to raising Stormy Webster, Kylie Jenner is more of a hands-on mom than you may think. The CEO, reality star, businesswoman, and cosmetics queen may have a lot of jobs, but being a mom is a role that Kylie takes the most seriously. The star has some help from nannies and aunties with the job of raising her three-year-old daughter, but Kylie is still hands-on with Stormy and is instilling some important values in the mini fashionista. Besides a closet full of designer clothes and bags, little Stormy has some important rules she has to follow as long as King Kylie is in charge. Humble reminders. 
When your mom just happens to be a CEO of one of the world's biggest cosmetic companies, your life may be slightly different than other kids your age. The life that Stormy Webster knows is one of total luxury. Thankfully, Kylie Jenner is teaching her growing daughter how to stay humble. Kylie has said that she regularly reminds Stormy that the way they live isn't normal. Kylie is doing her best to help Stormy understand their fame and privilege. Kylie told Harper's Bazaar, I'm just trying my best, even though she's still little, to remind her how blessed we are. From the patience and manners that Stormy showed off during the fruit snack challenge, Kylie's lessons are clearly paying off. Oh, Did you win? <laughs> yeah. Okay, you can have three. Despite their incredible wealth, Stormy is learning about respect and humility. Don't look! When you're as famous as the Carr Jenner family, paparazzi and crowds of fans come with the job. However, since Stormy was born, Kylie has been protective over her image and face being shared online. Unless she's the one doing the sharing, that is. When Stormy was a baby, Kylie would make guests check their phones at the door to ensure that Stormy wasn't the subject of any unplanned photo shoots. Now that Stormy's getting older, Kylie is teaching her daughter how to handle it when the cameras are near. It's impossible to avoid the Hollywood media creeping on their everyday outings, but Kylie knows how to capitalize on the fame and attention, using her platform to build successful businesses. Now, she's showing her daughter how to manage it as well. Looks like Stormy has that don't bother me look pretty much down. Internet free. As Kylie teaches Stormy about how to handle fame and fortune, the mom of one is still navigating how to introduce Stormy to the negative side of being famous. So far, Kylie has kept Stormy away from the negativity and internet backlash that comes with living in the public eye. Kylie said, I think about it a lot because the world is just so crazy now. Exposing her to all of the negativity that comes with the internet, I think about that too. Kylie, however, knows that it all comes with the territory of her life and Stormy's. She's also taking notes from her older sister Kim, who had to explain to her daughter, North, why their family is so famous. Kim offered a to-the-point explanation. My name is Kim Kardashian. No. And Daddy is Kanye West. And Daddy is a singer, performer. Mommy has so many talents I can't even begin to name them. Well put, Kim. Homeschool Preschool. After 10th grade, Kylie and Kendall Jenner were homeschooled so they could focus on the family business, aka reality TV, and their own budding careers. The sisters worked with Novel Education Group, a tutoring program that let them study independently. Thanks to their lack of school dances and football games, the sisters were able to pour everything into their cosmetics and modeling aspirations. Now that Stormy is almost ready for kindergarten, do you think Kylie will opt to homeschool? At least for now, Stormy is rocking that preschool life and looking pretty fashionable while doing it. As for whether or not Stormy will take over the family business, Kylie told Forbes in 2018, maybe one day I'll pass this on to Stormy, if she's into it. Hands-on parenting. As a working mom, Kylie has help from nannies and family for Stormy's daily care. Although, she's also shared that she's very hands-on and gets Stormy up, dressed, and ready for preschool. Kylie has shared that her parenting style comes from her good memories of her dad, Caitlyn Jenner, driving her to school every day as a kid. She said, My dad was the best growing up, never missed a sports game, took us to school every day, and our school was like 45 minutes from our house. Despite being a businesswoman, Kylie manages everything seamlessly. It's hard to manage mom life and work life sometimes. To help, Kylie made Stormy a bedroom and playroom at the Kylie Cosmetics offices so she could still spend time with her daughter while working. Cousin Bond If there's one thing the Car Jenners instill in their next generation, it's the importance of family. For a group that seems to always be in one feud or another, these sisters have each other's backs. Stormy may be an only child, but Kylie is ensuring that her daughter forms lifelong bonds with her cousins. Stormy's third birthday party was a cousins-only celebration, despite the loosening of restrictions on gatherings in LA. Stormy often hangs out with Little True, Dream, North, Penelope, Chicago, and Psalm. We can't wait to see these little ones growing up together. Kylie told Harper's Bazaar that she does feel some pressure to give Stormy a sibling and described the close bond she had with Kendall while growing up. Kendall and I were so close in age. We had a close bond, but we are definitely polar opposites. But it works out. We don't ever cross. She does her thing and I do mine. Then we come together and have a great time. 
coordinated co-parenting. Even though Kylie and Stormy's dad, Travis Scott, haven't always been officially a couple, they've found a way to successfully co-parent their daughter. Stormy has two parents who love and support her, and that's the goal. Kylie and the Astro World rapper agree on most parenting things and coordinate well to raise Stormy. As she gets older, the family of three makes an effort to spend time together for parties, vacations, and events. Kylie said that for co-parenting, she looks to her own parents for inspiration. We both love Stormy and want what's best for her. We stay connected and coordinated. Kylie added that she thinks about Chris and Caitlin in situations with Stormy, what they would do. They were very hands-on with me, and I want the same for Stormy. Dog people. What's a better life lesson for a kid than taking care of a pet? Training dogs teaches kids responsibility, and Stormy is getting that lesson times five. Kylie Jenner's household is home to five pups. Norman, Bambi, Rosie, Harley, and Kevin are the Italian greyhound dogs that Kylie and Stormy take care of. Kylie's nannies and staff do most of the dog walking and care, but growing up with pets is great for kids like little Stormy. Are you surprised to find out that the makeup mogul is such a dog person? Enjoy life. Another rule that Kylie is teaching three-year-old Stormy is the importance of enjoying life. What's the use of being a billionaire if you don't treat yourself and your family once in a while? For Stormy's recent birthday, Kylie organized a girls' trip to Turks and Caicos. Kylie flew Stormy, Kim, Courtney, Chloe, and the girl cousins to a private beach getaway. The group stayed in a tropical private villa and had some sand and sun fun with the kids. Kylie also brought along two of her gal pal besties, Stacy and Victoria. Stormy is learning about the good life and getting to know how to enjoy a little luxury with fashion and vacations. Body Acceptance Kylie is also teaching Stormy about the importance of body acceptance and self-love. Having confidence is part of the Car Jenner way, and Kylie, like her sisters, has dealt with plenty of insulting comments about her body and looks. She's showing her daughter that while beauty and fashion are part of their lives, loving yourself comes first. She said, I want to be an example for her. What kind of example would I be if she said she doesn't like her ears, and then I didn't like them either? I just want to teach her that. I'm trying to love myself more. Kylie told Vogue Australia that after having a baby, her body changed, but that she was able to love herself. I feel like having a daughter has made me love myself more and accept everything about me. Who wouldn't want Kylie Jenner as a mom? Stormy Webster is one lucky toddler with a family of powerful women and moms supporting her as she grows up. Kylie is raising her daughter with some great values and rules. We can't wait to see what Stormy will take on as she gets older. The next generation of Car Jenner ladies is coming for you, world! Kourtney Kardashian and Travis Barker have very different parenting styles. How will these soon-to-be newlyweds and parents of 5 plus navigate co-parenting after tying the knot? This is such a dream come true. Family Vacations the Kardashian family loves their vacations. A once-a-year event for normal families is a monthly or weekly occurrence for the successful Car Jenner clan. Courtney is partial to luxurious beach trips, lavish ski resorts, and romantic desert trips. When the kids are involved, Courtney and Travis choose family-friendly vacays. In May of 2021, the gang all visited the happiest place on earth and were joined by Barker's kids, who he shares with ex-wife Shanna Mochler. The group also took a snowy trip down the slopes in Deer Valley, Utah, with Barker's daughter Alabama and stepdaughter Atiana shortly after the pair announced their official relationship. After getting married, will Courtney and Travis continue traveling with all their kids together? While the older kids might soon be over Disney, it's likely we'll see more full-on Kardashian Barker ski trips this coming winter season. Who Picks Clothing Courtney is big on letting her kids find their own style. Since her daughter Penelope was younger, Courtney allowed her to choose her own outfits as a way to express herself. The mom of three said, I love for her to choose and be herself. Since dating Travis, Courtney's style has evolved to incorporate more of the rocker lifestyle. She's giving us more leather, sheer, and fur looks, and fans are loving it. Before, she was more in the realm of Scott Disick's California prep looks. Will the kids follow in the footsteps of Disick's trendy style or gravitate towards the Barker look of ripped jeans and band tees? Social Media while co-parenting their kids, Courtney and Travis will have to agree on the family's social media rules. The Poosh founder is big on no TikTok or Instagram for her kids until they're old enough and responsible. The rule began after Mason's big mess-ups on the internet. 
when he revealed personal information to his followers that the fam did not want leaked. But Barker's kids all have social media and use it for their personal and artistic endeavors. Barker's son Landon has Instagram and uses social media to fuel his music career. Travis's older daughter Alabama also uses Instagram for modeling and brand endorsements. Home Sweet Home where will they all live? Blink-182 drummer Travis Barker is already the owner of two mansion estates in Calabasas, worth over $10 million in all. The musician previously rented one of his homes out and lived in the other. Barker's ex Mokler jokingly said on Instagram that the kids spend more time with their dad because he lives behind two gates, has a mega mansion, and is cooler than me. However, Courtney's home is where her younger kids have lived for most of their lives, but in June, the star dropped around $12 million on a Palm Springs mansion that includes a 15-hole golf course and six bedrooms big enough for the whole family. It sounds like they have a few decent options. Daily Dinners Dinner time is family time at Court's house. While co-parenting, Court and Barker will have to figure out family dinner rules. The former reality TV star makes sure that when she's not working, neither is her nanny. Courtney likes to be the one raising her kids and spending quality time together during bedtime, evenings, and meals. Since Travis Barker's kids are older, he's not as accustomed to the full-time parenting style that Courtney's into. After joining forces, will the couple continue to be as hands-on as Court has been over the last 11 years? More kids. Along with parenting the kids they already have, Courtney and Travis are deciding if they should add to their blended family. Do you think Court and Barker will be bringing more kids into their household? 42 year old Kardashian recently opened up about the pressure she felt to preserve her fertility options in case she decides to have more kids in the future. Although at the time, she wasn't sure and said, I don't know if I even want to have another kid or if that's like in the future or whatever. With the couple moving so quickly from dating to marriage, a baby doesn't seem totally out of the question encouraging music. Courtney's kids may still be young, but she and Travis are encouraging all their children to follow their dreams with a strong push on musical careers. Barker gave Courtney's daughter Penelope her own drum set as a gift, and the nine-year-old is already showing off her talent. Courtney shared a video of Penelope and Barker jamming out. Travis's 18-year-old son Landon has already begun his career in music and has produced rap music since his stint on the family's MTV reality show, Meet the Barkers education and careers. While music may not be in the cards for all of Courtney and Travis's kids, the pair are encouraging them to pursue education or careers in whatever they feel passionate about, without the pressure of going to college or being majorly successful. Art is about self-expression, and that's what Travis taught his two older daughter and stepdaughters, Atiana and Alabama. 22-year-old Atiana is a talented artist and is building a career as a model and influencer, while 15-year-old Alabama is also pursuing a future in fashion supporting choices. Travis and Court might have different rules for their kids, but marriage is all about compromising and supporting each other's parenting decisions. Courtney has been a strong believer in a strict routine for her kids. The bedtime routine and doing the books and the, you know. Whether or not that's how Barker raises his teens, the important thing is that Court supports his parenting choices. Healthy food. Fans know that Courtney is raising her kids with a healthy diet. Mason, Penelope, and Rain grew up on a mostly no-sugar, health food lifestyle. She's been known to opt for vegan, gluten-free, and all-natural snack choices. Travis Barker is a little more relaxed when it comes to his kids eating junk food. And he's even pulled Court into the McDonald's dark side on occasion. Once they're living together permanently, will Courtney's parenting rules on health food loosen up a smidge? Everyone gets along. One thing the couple doesn't have to worry about is their kids getting along and bonding. Since Travis and Courtney were neighbors since 2017, their kids were already friends. In an older episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians, Courtney mentioned the Barker fam, saying, His kids and my kids are really good friends. Despite their age gap, Mason gets along with both Alabama and Landon, while the two older girls are also close with Courtney. Tattoos allowed? As Court's kids get closer to the dreaded teen years, will she have to steer them away from dreams of arm sleeves and ink? With a cool rocker stepdad like Travis Barker, it's likely the older kids will soon be asking for tattoos of their own. Since Courtney recently tried her hand at inking, giving Barker an I love you script on his arm, do you think Mason and Penelope will be allowed to get tattoos? Give it time. 
While co-parenting, Courtney and Travis will give all the kids time to adjust to the new arrangement, making sure that they bond through activities and that everyone is comfortable. Parker and his kids are as close as Courtney and her three, so the trust is definitely there. In 2020, Alabama wrote her dad via social media, Dad, I love you so much. Thank you for all you do for me in my life. You've been there through thick and thin. Disick experience. Since their split in 2015, Courtney and her ex Scott Disick have been navigating the co-parenting lifestyle. It's not harder, it's just different. Since parting ways, Courtney and Scott raised Mason, Penelope, and Rain together, finding ways to be respectful and pleasant to each other around the kids. Courtney had plenty of experience sharing parenting responsibilities with another person and will bring that to the table in her new relationship. Travis also shares a past of co-parenting and raising a stepdaughter. Grown-up vacations. While traveling with the kids is important, Courtney and Travis also make time for romantic getaways. Alone time is an important part of parenting after all. While dating, Court and Barker often showed off their one-on-one -on -one trips, brimming with PDA and gram-worthy pics. The pair took a romantic trip to Cabo while dating, where they rode horses on the beach and enjoyed fireworks. Their dreamy getaway to the Utah desert made headlines for some noteworthy PDA moments. Before their engagement, Travis and Courtney also ventured to Europe. The couple enjoyed some Portofino pasta and a little more PDA. We thought we had rules growing up, but the royal family's household rules are on a whole other level. Honestly, I couldn't have been the only one wondering what life would be like for children of literal royalty. And if you guessed that the household rules for George, Charlotte, and Louis were more than a little intense compared to the average kid, just wait. I know that the position I'm in, that's what's required of me to do. Say it calmly or don't say it at all. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have seemingly everything most of us would want, but at the end of the day, kids will still be kids. So occasional bickering should be expected, right? You would think so, but not in the royal household. According to The Sun, shouting is absolutely off limits in their home, or mansion. Instead, Kate and William have an alternative approach to handling issues between their children. Not a timeout corner, not a stern talking to, but a chat sofa. Here, they're encouraged to talk out their feelings and frustrations instead of yelling at each other. They're also encouraged to never go to bed angry with each other. And honestly, that's advice we could all use. Keeping a united front. We've all seen it. One parent says their kid can't do something so naturally, they ask the other parent. And some of us have done it ourselves. Sure, that works in pretty much every preteen sitcom in existence, but it will not fly with Kate and William. To help with this, they use the same no shouting rule they expect their kids to use. A source told Daily Record, things are explained and consequences outlined, and they never shout at them. And honestly, kudos to them. With the high demands of being the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, along with with the demands of just being a parent in general, it can't be easy to always stay calm and keep a level-headed demeanor when kids start acting like, well, kids. Exploring nature literally every day. At this point, most of us know that going out in nature has a ton of benefits and can be great for your mental and physical health. Though Charlotte, George, and Louis are still a little too young to fully understand those benefits, Kate and William still make sure their kids spend plenty of time outdoors, in literally any type of weather, rain included. According to the Daily Record, if it is tipping down, they will still go out. Wet weather is just inappropriate clothing. You have to put the right stuff on. That's pretty intense to say the least, but it's actually a great way to make sure kids are tired and ready for their strict 7 p.m. bedtime. No processed foods in this house. Eating excess processed food isn't great for anyone's overall health, but most of us at least got to enjoy a little bit of that good old high fructose corn syrup every now and then. But as we've probably covered by now, the Cambridge household is all but your average family. As the royal children get older, they're pretty much destined to have to take on similar roles that their parents took on, and having a healthy diet will definitely help the kids meet those demands in the future. Not to mention that there really isn't a need to consume so much processed food when you have an array of private chefs to help out in the kitchen. Neutral colors are the new black. 
You don't have to be a super fan of the royal family to know that Kate, William, and the rest of the Cambridge family always come dressed to impress. And you may already know that black attire is a must for the family when traveling in case they may need it. But because of this, simply wearing black clothing during the day is prohibited by the family. Personally, I don't know what I'd do without black staple clothing items, but the Cambridge family just makes it work, and it seems effortless for them. Their outfits are always on point and expertly coordinated, so just just what you'd expect from the kids of a duke and duchess. No baby food for babies. It's not too surprising that children of royalty wouldn't be allowed to eat processed foods, but at first glance, not being allowed to eat close to the only foods babies can eat seems a little drastic. But looking at everything else we've covered so far, it wouldn't really be on brand for the royal family if it wasn't a rule, right? I guess all those private chefs really do come in handy in the Cambridge household. And it makes sense, seeing as how any fresh produce the babies eat has to be mashed and pureed twice to ensure there are no lumps in their food. These kids haven't even grasped the concept of eating yet, and they still eat like the future kings and queens that they are. Serving in the military. Prince William joined the army, Prince Charles joined the navy, and Prince Harry served in the air force. If you're sensing a theme here, you'd be absolutely right. Men in the royal family aren't just encouraged to join the military, it's expected of them. They may not have to worry about that now, with George and Louis still being as young as they are, but eventually, this is something they'll have to consider doing as they get older. But for now, they're expected to enjoy being kids, seeing as how Kate and William strive to give their kids as normal of a life as royal children can have. And we love to see it. I mean, look at this. Adorable! Emotional Coaching with all the etiquette training, international travel, and always having a plethora of new people to meet, the Duke and Duchess are pretty much required to be humble and well-rounded, and they raise their children to replicate those same qualities. Even in photos and videos of the royal family, they seem to have a warm and welcoming presence, and there's a reason for that. According to a royal source, emotional coaching is a Cambridge parental building block, awareness of others less fortunate than themselves, physical and mental health, and going to sleep in a calm, happy house is so utterly important to them all. Royalty or not, that's something we can definitely get behind. Telling literally everyone about a new royal birth. We're not kidding. Every child born in the royal family has the announcement of their birth publicized for all of England to see. Well, Kind of. According to royal traditions, the birth of a new child is written on a royal letterhead and sent to Buckingham Palace. From there, the letterhead is placed on an easel in front of the palace for all to see. Or, you know, they just use Twitter. Think about it, though. These kids are alive for maybe an hour before they have more publicity than most of us will ever have in a lifetime. It's a pretty nice accomplishment for someone who's less than 24 hours old. No Christmas gifts on Christmas. Not to say that the royal children don't receive gifts on one of the most important holidays the royal family celebrates. It's more so that Christmas Day is usually filled with more than a few traditional obligations. There are two church services the royal family attends in the morning, followed by lunch at Sandringham in the Red Drawing Room. The Queen addresses the nation and the family spends the rest of the evening enjoying quality time together. Because of this, it's tradition for gifts to be exchanged on Christmas Eve instead. Sorry, Tim Cook, no iPads allowed here. It may be a staple product for a lot of parents raising kids today, but iPads are banned from Kensington Palace. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have pretty strict rules when it comes to screen time for their kids, and you can already assume there's a hard time limit for it. As great as YouTube kids may be to a lot of people, a different approach is taken in the Cambridge household. A source told Us Weekly, as two people who grew up without gadgets for entertainment themselves, William and Kate are firm believers in toys, outdoor play, and encouraging an active imagination. They're very much a normal family. Doing chores. You'd think that if you live in a place with nannies and personal chefs, chores would seem like a thing of the past, but that's actually not the case for the royal children. Both George and Charlotte assist Kate in the kitchen to cook the family's meals, and Prince George has even been known to help out with delivered groceries and frequently asks if there's anything he can help carry inside. It shows how down-to-earth the family is, and Kate and William waste no time teaching their children how to be polite, kind, and grateful for all the help they receive around the house. 
Staying home on school nights. Okay, honestly, this may be the most normal rule that Kate and William make their children adhere to in the house. The royal family has a hectic schedule and have countless obligations they must meet, but it's refreshing to know that the Cambridge family doesn't pack their children's schedules with too many demands during the week. Seeing as how education is so highly valued to the Duke and Duchess, they set strict rules for their children and don't allow them to go to events on school nights. This way, they're well-rested and ready to attend and classes the next day. Cloth diapers only, please. With personal chefs making twice pureed food for the young princes and the princess of Cambridge, we can all pretty much unanimously agree that the life of a royal baby is already as glamorous as it gets. Remember the whole public baby announcement thing from a few minutes ago? Insane! And to top it all off, royal babies are only allowed to wear cloth diapers, and nannies are required to know how to properly put them on and fold them for the children. There's also always someone on duty to wash the diapers whenever they need it. With all the hard work the nannies and housekeepers do to assist the Cambridge family, I'm sure potty training time couldn't come soon enough. Having a hands-on approach to parenting. While the Duke and Duchess have an entire staff of nannies and caretakers for their children to help with their busy schedule, some may be surprised to find out that Kate and William are very hands-on with their children, even when it may be looked down upon from time to time. Apart from already allowing themselves to get messy while playing outside with their kids and participating in craft projects, Kate and William take pride in being the primary caretakers in their children's lives. When Prince George was born, the couple didn't decide to hire any out outside help at first, and focused on just being parents. Penelope, North, Mason, and the other Car Jenner kids have some strict rules for social media. This isn't keeping up with the Kardashians, this is keeping up with the kids. Looking out for each other. Just like their parents, the younger generation of Kardashians and Jenners are all about having each other's backs. The older kids, including Kim's daughter North and Courtney's son Mason and daughter Penelope, are especially close and spend a lot of time together. Recently, Mason, who is the oldest of Kris Jenner's adorable grandkids, reached out to Kim to voice his concern for 8-year-old North's new foray into social media. The 12-year-old texted the KKW Beauty founder, writing, Hi, I don't want to disrespect North, but I don't think she should be doing the lives unless someone is with her. Because people are always screen recording and she might tell information that isn't correct and stuff like that that she will regret. Kim replied, saying, I appreciate you looking out, Mason, and I agree. She felt bad and I don't think she will do it again, but it could be good if you talk to her about it. Mason agreed to have a heart-to-heart -heart with North the next time he would come over. So sweet. No family secrets. Mason is being extra careful about his little cousins after accidentally spilling some private family secrets secrets himself. In a few unapproved by Courtney live streams, Mason spilled the tea on the Kardashians' love lives. He didn't hesitate to discredit a rumor for his fans that in fact his aunt Kylie Jenner and her boyfriend Travis Scott were back together at the time. No, Kylie and Travis are not back together. Quickly following the live, Mason's Instagram account was deleted and Courtney confirmed that her son had started the account without permission from his parents. She said, he started an Instagram yesterday and he didn't ask us. I did delete it because Scott and I felt like he's 10. No going live. In his text to Kim, Mason Disick went on to caution his younger cousin about posting regret. I did the exact same thing as she did. He said, I would do the lives and now I regret saying one of the things that I said. Courtney's son was right about one thing. Kim has a strict no live rule for North. When North went live without Kim's permission, she decided to give fans a house tour and a peek into their sing display while giggling and running around with her friends. The fun ends when she finds Kim laying in bed. Mom, I'm live. <laughs> After Courtney initially deleted Mason's Instagram profile and turned his TikTok account to private, he sneakily switched it back to public and went live again. I would have had 2.7 mil by now if I kept it up. This time, when a follower asked why his account was deleted, he said, It got deleted because I was too young because I went viral. Kim later said that she has rules about social media for her kids. She also said that North later felt bad about breaking the rules and apologized joint account with mom. 
In November, North launched her TikTok account called Kim and North, which is a joint profile with her mom. At eight years old, she's still too young for the responsibility of managing an account on her own. Kourtney Kardashian's nine-year-old Penelope has also started her own account with her mom called P and Court, where she can share her own versions of TikTok trends, dances, and of course, her daily beauty routine. And while these kiddos may get away with unapproved posts from time to time, the profiles still clearly state, account managed by an adult. Age limits while some of the younger Car Jenner kids are often seen on Instagram through their parents' accounts, only the older kids are actually allowed to post, and all with their parents' supervision, of course. After Mason's mishap when he was 10, Courtney revealed that she and Scott agreed that 13 was an appropriate age for their son to have his own Instagram and TikTok accounts. The creators of the app agree, given that their guidelines are that users have to be 13 to register. Penelope's joint account with Courtney was disabled multiple times after her string of shares likely because it was flagged as being an underage profile. No reading comments. Most celebs will probably tell you that the quickest way to feel down is to read the comments on your social media. Some followers seriously have no shame when it comes to trolling stars' social media. He blocked me. One rule for the Car Jenner kids is to stay away from the comments section. Not that Kim and her sisters always follow this rule themselves. While Kylie, Courtney, and Chloe rarely respond to comments, Kim clearly takes some criticisms to heart. Just the scrutiny that we get all the time, we try to avoid that. Since she's been known to change captions and posts following negative remarks in the comments. Once after captioning a photo of her and Courtney with, somehow in this crazy life we found each other, a fan commented, yeah, because you're sisters, leading the star to quickly alter her caption. Just want to make sure we like handle it, let's like get it over with, no time to like freak out. No sharing bank info. This should definitely be a no-brainer kind of rule for anyone who decides to have a social media account. Doesn't it go without saying that you shouldn't share your bank info with strangers? For the Car Jenner kids on the internet, it's inevitable that there will be folks trying to take advantage of the kids' privileged lifestyles and their parents' massive net worths. In comments on North's TikTok posts, some followers were shamelessly trying to get Kim's credit card number, writing, Northy, can you show us mommy's credit card? And another writing, Northy, do you know how to do a bank transfer, and even asking her if she can send them a Venmo. One user wrote, Hey, did you hear about the trend where you give us your parents' bank info? No oversharing. Kim wasn't too surprised when North decided to go rogue and overshare on the app. She is, after all, the queen of oversharing her life. She had cameras follow her around for decades. My name is Kim Kardashian. No. And daddy is Kanye West. The star said that North also takes after her father's tendency to overshare, saying, I mean, Northwest is Kanye West's daughter. Forget that, she's his twin. So she will definitely do all of the above. But for her daughter, Kim is trying to teach some restraint. She said, and then I was like, oh, it's too funny, I have to. But there are some things when I'm like, you know what, let's not post that. Learning the business. Some of the family members are using social media to teach the kids to manage business on the internet. Kim, Court, and Kylie all use their Instagram platforms to market and promote their brands on a daily basis. Kylie is especially into showing her daughter Stormy Webster the ropes. The almost four-year-old already has her face attached to Kylie's brand, Kylie Baby, in addition to having her name trademarked for future business endeavors. Which is her own office where she gets all her business done. No calling out other celebs. Mason got into trouble once again when he was given some social media privileges only to make more mistakes on the internet. The then 11-year-old revealed his thoughts about the makeup guru Jeffree Star, throwing shade and calling the media celeb spoiled AF. Jeffree Star is like spoiled AF. Starting a soft feud between the two. Oops. Kim, however, let it slide when North called her out on socials, sharing that her mom talks different in her videos. I got this. Is that what you, is that what I say? Is that what I sound like? No sharing location. Another obvious rule for the Car Jenner kids is that they aren't allowed to share their location with followers. The family is often jetting around and prefer a touch of privacy from paparazzi and fans. Some followers even thought it was unsafe when North went live while at home, indicating her location to millions of viewers. On top of not sharing their locations, Courtney also initially wanted her kids' profiles to be private only. When they're old enough to have solo profiles, we bet they won't be following through with this rule. Plug mom and dad. 
Some fans criticized the moms letting their kids have social media accounts, claiming that they were only using them to promote their own brands. But why not? These business moguls know how to use the internet to their advantage. In one of Kim and North's first TikToks together, the pair enjoyed a spa day repping Aunt Kylie's skincare line, Kylie Skin. Kim was also criticized when she promoted her brand Skims through North's TikTok account. The eight-year-old happily shared a couple of videos of her mom's merchandise for her followers, using her videography skills to show off an orange bikini and fuzzy skim slippers. TikTok only. For now, it's TikTok only. No Instagram, YouTube, or Twitter, at least until they're a little older. The app recently integrated parental settings for kids under 13 so they're safer while using the public platform. Parents can set limits on screen time, disable DMs, and restrict mature content depending on their preference. The Kardashian kids are only allowed to share on other platforms when they're working as a collaboration with older family members, like on Kylie's cooking show or Courtney's YouTube videos. Parents aren't too controlling. Even though their accounts are monitored by their parents, the Car Jenner kids are still allowed some creative freedom on their social media pages. For example, Penelope recently showed off her grown-up style manicure, which included fake nails, while drinking a soda with mom Courtney. The 42-year-old mom of three took some heat for letting her daughter have fake nails, but still chose to let the video remain posted. Courtney has previously stated that she believes in letting her kids express themselves, especially through style and clothes choices. Apparently, that includes some snatched acrylics. Have fun. Kim and her siblings agree that social media should be about more than just doing things that are post-worthy. It can be fun, too. Oh, yeah! Kim said, Because there's so many cousins, I do feel like, you know, they grow up so normally and have so much fun. And I never want them to feel like things are for social media or anything like that. We definitely have the conversation about it. In a recent video shared to Kim and North's account, the mother-daughter duo is joined by North's little siblings, Saint and Chicago, for the Drilla freestyle remix head bobbing trend. After a few internet mishaps for this family, it's no surprise that the Kardashian and Jenner kids have some strict rules to follow when it comes to social media use. Do you think North, Penelope, Mason, and the other kids are too young to have their own accounts? Tell us your thoughts in the comments below and subscribe to The Thing Celebrity for more stories about today's top celeb families.